Hello, everyone. Welcome to this very special episode of the Two Fish at the Table Poker Podcast. I'm your first host, East Coast Sam. And I'm your other host, Legend Done One on Poker Stars. And you know, Sam, it's funny, uh, every now and then I volunteer and uh I, I actually I run an arts class, uh creative arts class for some poker players that are trying to transition out of uh poker. And one of my students was doing a uh, uh sculpting out of rock. And uh, he turned in his like final project was this giant like orb, a circle shaped piece of rock. And I was like, "What is this?" I was like, "It's it's the stone bubble." The stone bubble, I like it. So, guys, this is kind of a uh, main event check in, as Sam uh, coined uh, for for us in discussions earlier about kind of we're at the not quite the halfway point, but in a lot of ways the halfway point of the main event. Day four was yesterday. Day five is happening as we speak. We've had uh, varying experiences in engaging with this main event. I have stayed um, on the ball watching every second of the Go coverage, as well as reading every single poker news update as it comes out. I know Sam has had a little bit of a different uh, chance to engage with the main event. Yeah, I haven't really been watching this main event that much. Um, I've been busy with work and uh, helping our brother move and all sorts of different stuff. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I was able to watch the bubble burst uh, last night. It was pretty cool to, and I got to watch it with Ben as well, uh, see all the tension and just the crazy action that led down to the bubble and just how the bubble burst, which just, we'll get into just insane. But yeah, this has been a pretty fun main event to follow thus far uh, as Probably everybody watching this knows there's just 464 people left out of 10,112 entries. We are back uh, on top of the world in terms of the biggest main event ever with uh, just $10 million up top, just 10, uh, which I think is a little weird that, you know, you outlast more players this year and you get 2.1 million less dollars this year, but still $10 million life-changing money, obviously top nine make a million dollars. So really anybody's game at this point. Uh, it's obviously too early to say who's going to win, who's going to lose. Adrian Mateos is a big stack. Uh, Phil Ivey is still in the hunt. Uh, so we'll just have to see what happens. But it has been fun watching uh, some of the hands and stuff that's gone on. No, so, you know, there was four day one streams. And the formula that they kind of had was the players play the first two levels of that day. Uh, level three gets broadcasted on Poker Go with like a half hour delay. They go on dinner break and then they do the last two levels right after that. And they did that pattern for all the day ones. And then I think also for day two. And then with day three, we got uh, the, I think, four levels instead of five. And then on day four onward, I think we get every level, uh, every all the action with uh, really just two featured tables. And uh, to my surprise, actually, not on that grand stage that they did last year. It's just been kind of in these two sort of like closed off tables, like the actual room configuration of where they're playing the main event is different. The two TP tables aren't even in the same room as the other tables going on concurrently. So that's a bit of a surprise. I, I'm not against it per se. I'm just a little surprised they would differ, differ from a format that I thought was working fine the last couple of years. And then uh, besides that, uh, and you know, we had the usual rotating booth of commentators. We only only got Lon uh, starting yesterday. And then we had David Tuckman, Jeff Platt, a good uh, a rotating base, um, which I'm not not against. I like having a variety of pack of people, but I also felt like it's, it was kind of hard for any one particular team to get some, any momentum going. So it kind of felt like we weren't really getting, uh, and it's, it's, you know, I guess a certain continuity I would have liked. That, that was my takeaway from that. Yeah, I mean, there's a few things that I sort of haven't really liked about the presentation. The first, as you mentioned, having the two feature tables be in its own room makes them feel very distant and desolate. I like having people standing around the tables commenting on what's going on. There are a couple people who are standing there, but it just feels, again, very distant from the rest of the action. The players who are there don't really know what's going on. This was a big deal during the bubble when there was a lot of stalling because the players weren't sure where exactly was going on. You know, it was just it just feels odd to have that that distance away from everybody else a lot of people have been complaining about the graphics and even the lighting that there are shots within the coverage that are really dark and the color correction and the lighting's off i agree with that there have been quite a few graphic errors and also just camera errors like cutting to a different camera that you weren't supposed to. this happened during the bubble like um you know jack jack f will be giving a speech you know explaining what the updates are and then it would just like cut to a camera and the microphone wouldn't be cued in so you would just have like the built-in mic on this camera and so jack sounded really distant this also happened with jeff platt multiple 
multiple times that the audio wasn't going through the microphone he was holding. It was going through the built-in microphone. So you could still hear him, but he sounded very distant. I mean, this would be stuff that they should be testing out before. You know, you have, you're starting coverage pretty late. So you should be able to do in camera runs, doing audio runs to make sure it doesn't happen, which, you know, you're paying for this. You're paying a lot of, you know, a lot of money for this comparatively speaking. So I really think that they need to be upping their production game moving forward. Yeah, and there are a good number of uh, card graphic glitches. Like they'll have have the cards wrong or players. You can see they have the cards over the little squares on the table, and they don't appear on the coverage. Which I mean, I don't mind having the occasional wild card hand. That's not that's fine. But when it's clearly an, a, by virtue of a technical issue, it kind of irks me a little bit. Uh, and also, uh, it, it, that's, that's like whoever's like typing like the bet sizing to put on the graphics. They're like a little hasty sometimes. They'll, they'll, miss, a, they'll miss like a decimal point sometimes. So instead of it being like. 47,500, I'll put like, you know, 4,750 or just weird things like that. And again, I, I feel like this, these weren't nearly as apparent in years past, which makes me wonder, was there a budget cut? Is this a different team in place? Is it because they don't have it on the usual soundstage? The entire tech wiring setup is different. I mean, the, the two tables they play on, they, they remind me a lot of some of those early day one streams from last year, like the table that Negroni was on that we were uh, spectating in, in person. Um, so I, I didn't mind that not being the case for the for, for the day one action, because it was, again, much like last year. I don't, I'm fine with continuity there. But once we got into just even just day three, because for me, day three is kind of when the main event gets real to me. Uh, mm -hmm. because everyone's in the same room at the same time, they're all playing at the same time, and the bubble starting, the countdown starting, you know, to loom in the back of everyone's minds. So I don't mind waiting till day three for that stage to be used, but even now on day four, and I, I assume day five onward, that's going to be the case. I would like to think maybe for like day eight, when there's three tables left, you have the main table and the two other tables, please, but uh, we'll have to see in a few days, obviously. Yeah, I mean, that is the way to do it when you're down to three tables, is just have that set up. I'm just surprised they're not they're not doing that, that they're only doing two featured tables. And then again, they have camera crews going through, you know, the hall and showing different hands and all that. But again, the camera quality is really off. You know, Ben, you had this suggestion we were watching the bubble the other day that there's there's security cameras and cameras over a lot of the tables. You could just cut to those. Mm -hmm. You know, just cut to table two thirty-two if there's an all in player and then cut to four seventy-three. You know, that would just that would make it a lot more lively. It would let you see the action a lot better when they were doing the bubble and going, you know, hand for hand showing the different tables that were all in, they had to like bring this camera crew over and all these people were swarming over to film it for their Instagrams and people had to like get out of the way and were jostling people. And it would sometimes take a couple of minutes to get the camera set up. And if you just had the cameras overhead, that would just make that a lot easier to implement. And also had people removing these Instagrammers that they're not in the way. I mean, that would be, it's so much easier to do. I totally agree. And I, 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 again, if you take that out of the equation, I'm enjoying the coverage of the main event. Uh, I, I, I guess I'm not a huge fan of some of the Jeff Platt stuff. I, I, I kind of, if I was watching on, on backlog, I kind of like would fast forward through, through slow parts and maybe that would be one of the times I did. Uh, Jeff Platt was actually playing and interviewing uh, concurrently. Like he'd be, you know, playing on day one, whatever, and interviewing players, which, I'm just surprised he didn't just say, I'm going to take this day off. I, I, I mean, if, if I last longer, that's great for, you know, the company either way. Uh, I, I mean, it, I, I don't think it probably affected this game too much if you miss one or two hands. But then again, it could be the hand you get aces against Kings and, you know, win a lot of chips. So I, I'd be paranoid about that. Obviously, if I had like an emergency bathroom break, that's a different story than uh, after doing doing some work there. Um, but otherwise, uh, with, as you said, day five is beginning today with, 464 players. I have a good number of horses in the race. You know, all the past main event champions are knocked out there, but you know, it's funny with, with poker, uh, you watch, you know, for 12 months, you learn about new players, then they kind of get added to my informal roster of who I'm rooting for. So um, it, it, it's, it's kind of cool seeing a good number of players that I care, you know, decently about, if not, you know, a little bit more, a bit less uh, making it this far so far. Um, uh, unfortunately, uh, I, you know, uh, Daniel Negreanu, who was pretty prominently covered along with Phil Ivey, Negreanu was uh, very short on the start of day four and managed to squeak into the money uh, and then bust up a min cash. So I'm um, happy for him to finally get a, get a cash in the main event since 2015 had been his last one. And um, he's now, uh, now that he's made his bracelet in the PPC this year, maybe uh, the next big thing on the itinerary besides more bracelets obviously is a deep main event, main event run next year. Yeah, I mean, he still hasn't made a main event final table. I mean, he just hasn't quite gotten there yet. He's gotten close twice, but hopefully he'll finally get there. Yeah, and Sam, since you hadn't really watched uh, too much of the action outside of day four, 
Uh, I did think it'd be it'd be kind of cool to show you a few of the uh, sort of like viral ish uh, comp comp compilation worthy hands that Ergo did put on YouTube. Uh, they did a pretty good job of isolating like the top 20 minutes of hand action, even though there's a little bit of paring down the hand length because sometimes, you know, the, the hands pre-flop are a little bit longer than maybe YouTube would want them to be. So I did uh, cherry pick um, individual hands from these collections so that uh, it's not just us watching for two hours straight. And uh, is it, I, the, I apologize that it, what days are from are a little bit all over the place, but I, I figured you know if you were going to have a, a a Ben's top ten hands uh, of this main event so far, this would pretty much be uh, that list. So let me do another screen share here for you. Yeah, let's dive into these. And uh, you know, you tell me what you would have done maybe in some of these spots besides uh, have your besides watching obviously have your jaw drop in, in awe of how crazy this hand was. So this is a good one here. Tom Dwan, who unfortunately busted on uh, yesterday, but still made a pretty good run of it. This is um, after the after the, the, the bubble has burst, and uh, this is about like one level into that point. So here we go. So much guys, so many guys. Uh, can you hear it? Yeah, I can hear it. All right. So you said that there was a three count with ten on the off. Here we go. Oh, oh. Well, yeah, that was out of the way. I assume he's got to try once. You know, he's yeah. out with one hand. So we'll be a that here. All right. But 40K. Being on his best suspicious furrowed brow is Tom Dewan and call it. My brow is quite furrowed. Trey. Archella doesn't have a diamond in his hand. Wow, he's continuing. You bet square? Oh. Bringing these chips forward right now. I guess so. This size is quite large given how much time I have behind. Interesting. Chips at some point. Yeah, and I, I also feel like he can either bet a little bit smaller now and shove river, or he can make the big bet now, but then you can't really depend on getting the block through on a river for only 200 and the bubble end up being about a million chip five. So when he picks the size, I think he's just hoping this works. And if it doesn't, he's going to be likely to shut it down, given the price that a block on the river would be given top. For Tom, this is just a call. Bob is playing his role to the nth degree. Kevin Pollock will be proud. Yeah, he's really milking it. I like this. Uh, there's no way I. I think there's no way Tom goes all in there. You want to keep bluffs in it? And there's that's the thing I'm wondering. He, he can't really put up the on diamond, right? That is, I mean, that would be a perfect scenario. No, the only the only reason Tom might consider shoving is being able to oh, have some super ads. Oh. Okay. Uh, Sam, so while it's on ad, uh, in your in Tom's shoes, how do you play this hand? Do you slow play or do you do you raise this point? I slow play. I call. I want to give him the triple barrel. Yeah. Size is so big that he's just committing his opponent, and he wants to get the money in now before that. So let's say his opponent's pocket is without diamond. Obviously, he can't have diamond. Uh, yeah. Tom wants to now before diamond rolls up. His opponent gets away from him. Wow, snap shoves. Snap shove, snap call. Really? <laughs> there you go, buddy. Do you snap? Do you snap it, Sam, on the on the, when the board pair is still? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I agree. So that was one pretty crazy hand yesterday. They got Tom Dwan. He's I think see over a million chips. Uh, I think he got up to like one point one at one point, and then just kind of steadily, gradually fell down to bust out, maybe in like the six or seven hundreds place. But nonetheless, still a pretty awesome uh, moment for Tom Dwan there. We'll move on to another, another hand here. Uh, this is kind of a cooler on uh, day one uh, a at the TV table, as you see here, Sam. Oh, mm -hmm. locked in. Yeah, yeah. Very lost. Of course, course we know that from because he also plays a, a mean game while drinking. So as we uh, go back to our main feature table, the potential here of an enormous one, Donnie. Yeah, Hashem's got a hard draw here, the nut hard draw against Yerkwami's top set of queens, and then two pair for Romani. And we know Romani likes to get aggressive, and he stated earlier, you know, I'm going for it, I'm going over. Wow, and look at this. Okay. Hashem getting a really nice price here to see the river with his nut one draw. Now, we saw Hashem aggressive. Hey, Hashem, not Joe Hashem. Perhaps no incentive to do so. But uh, Hashem still. Just make still Hashem, yeah. I'm a little bit surprised that we didn't see a raise out of Romani, but maybe he thinks he's, he's trapping a little bit here. Yeah, 100,000, so you, you could definitely afford to, uh, to, to call it if you wanted to. The pod is definitely there. Behind them, behind Hashem was the raiser, and then both players called. All right, we're going to see three-way action on the river here. It is a jack of club, and we have full house versus full house. Fasten your seatbelts. This might get ugly. Obviously, we're going to lose Hashem here very likely, but the stack of pot ratio. Imagine turning the clubs there. Jeez. Wow, and you're Islami. I mean, his hand is extremely under rep. He did limp call three flop, so... You know, Romani might think one thing I do like, like is how they have pictures of these I mean, guys you now. Back to reflect potential hit of Romani might be thinking that his opponent is looking at him. And a quick raise to 25k of course, action out of the way. Action back on Yerushami. I have no idea how Romani would ever be able to put your Islam all in. Queen. So, all is made. Oh, so sick. <laughs> what a cooler. <laughs> all right. Boat over boat is always sick. That's Jeez. another one right there. All right. We'll move on to, uh, oh, shoot, spoilers. Day one B, Cooley being cooler against Ross's aces. Here. The Ooh, here. The the flop. Yes. Wow! It's like a lot, a lot of crazy run after this main event. It's here. Third card is the king of clubs giving uh, some outs here. Uh, 
an ace or a jack would still give him the best hand. Fish hook. If he holds coming. Favorite card incoming. And Rosk saved it here. And no, it's a four of clubs. Right here. Okay. Eldez is flopping below the straight. Here we go. I'm going to pause this here. There's a lot happening right here. As you can see, uh, we have a uh, top pair of a queen. We have the top end of the straight and the bottom end of the straight on on this in this hand here on day one also. That's just sick. It falls. Now let's see what Kerchas decides to come with here. 6,300 is the raise. This is going to put an SQ in a tricky spot, but most importantly, Valdez in a very tricky spot because he has the low end of the straight and is drawing dead against Kerchas' high straight. SQ flicks in a call. Oh, I'm sorry. is still in there. Very interesting. He's oh, really? already got back for clubs, but he's a bit ambitious here. He's sticking around. This is, there's a lot of action here. Look at this fold. Well, wow. Oh. Wow, good for her. Yeah, that's basically the hand here, and then it, 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 it's a chop at the end. So that's that's but the, 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 the big part was the big fold there. So that was very impressive. That and then uh, another hand of Helmuth, who had a very chaotic uh, stint on the TV table here. Uh, a great combination here of Helmuth and Lawrence here too. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Phil, you got this. You can dodge both. Oh. Jeez. There's one more hand of Helmy. He, he made some pretty crazy bluffs of like nine high and ten high that worked. So that's now in this hand he's hundred and twenty thousand tips. So he's got a double stack here on early on day one. So I'm I'm thinking this is gonna be a deep run for Phil, and then this hand happens. <laughs> now he'll, he'll win this hand then. Again, and an eight on the turn gets more to set. Okay, I'm not gonna be happy about this. The first thought that crossed Ethan in my mind when the eight hits is we might see lift off in some capacity. I'm getting eight thousand. Sure. The fish hook is coming. I believe in it. Wow. Wow. A little speech and then a call. That's a genuine speech. Oh, he hates it. Fish hook. Fish hook. Action on Morris. I wonder what size he can go here to actually get called by the name. Like the jam seat for shredding a hold. 35. Oh, Philly. <laughs> So again, another uh, pretty well handled hand. And if he just finds a fold there, he's going to have so many more chips for day two. And he in the bus on day two, unfortunately, I really felt like he could have folded there, but that's Phil for you, I guess. Uh, let's move on to another hand I pulled up here. Oh, here we go. Quite the showdown here in the That's closing cool, stages of day well, one. Ace King against Aces routine. Alcindor raising with Aces. I think I've actually seen this hand. But we'll okay. watch it. We're talking we'll watch Aces it. action now back on our initial razor. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. All in announced. Uh, and a snap call. Uh, loving. Uh, announcing through the rail that he has a pocket uh, Aces. Uh, <laughs> Alcindor sheepishly yeah. turning over Ace King. He is in a lot of trouble here as Loving's turn of life is on the line. Wow. Oh, yeah, yeah. The last hand of the night, and you find pocket aces. Life is good for loving, as he is 93%. I'm loving it. Life is good for loving. Words before disaster. The guy's name, Greg, goes all in on the board. King, Queen, Jack, all diamonds. Hold up here. Now, Cinder, with some newfound attention to the showdown. Look at all Cinder's face. Oh, my God. Turn card. The Queen of Hearts. Al Cinder, looking for a diamond or a king to send loving to the rail. Is it going to be there? Can he find it? River card. The king of oh, perhaps aces. Loving eliminated, and Alcindor could not believe it. Ugh, it's so gross. All right, we'll do another one here. Jerry Yang, Sam's um, Sam's boy from 07 who beat Philip Pilma we interviewed a while back. Uh, made a surprise appearance in a very kind of covered up thing. And uh, he got to this table of like 190,000 chips with the blinds 1K, 2K. And so clearly things won't go wrong for him, right? Over 8 million and 20 cash and line and I'll oh, probably do you off. Okay. As you do, as you three bet. Apparently, you said it better than I did. And Jerry Yang is three bet for 12K. 
with Eight Deuce Offsuit, the 2005 oh, main event champion. Oh, what are you wearing? I know what he's wearing. Doesn't seven five. Well, yeah, I know. All right, here we go. I don't believe I'm going to make the call. Eight and Eight Deuce. Eight and Ace. Okay, he's got backdoor straight draw. Oh, man. Sorry about that. This is just like, on YouTube. So, by the way, uh, Poker Go owns all of this footage. We're using it to comment on and for fair use and all that legal mumbo mem jumbo as always. Got it. Who's going to three bet with back doors. I believe in Jerry. God is on his side. Two of that was in one event. That was the 2007 World Series Poker Main event. All right. So, I just call here. Yep. Maybe I'll make the call. All right, Jerry. You got this, buddy. Yep, just bluff him off. There you go, all in. Yano has dead enough here to put. I'm sorry, Yang is dead enough here to put Yano all in. He's ripping a big ace. He's trying to tell the story. You pulled the same? And he got to make the call. And Yang's got to turn his cards over. And you've got to imagine what. Uh, do I fold it? I don't know. I think I, I think I. He has to turn his hand over. It's a tournament. You can't just mock. Yang really wanted to just show his throw his cards to mock. He can't do that in a tournament. He has to show it. Thank you. And then I think Jerry Yang, yep, in this hand right afterwards. Check, as you check. can see, he's down, down to 118 Here behind. Nine clubs. Here you go, Jerry. Play. All in. You got this, buddy. Yang is covered by... Uh, and Yang goes 25,000. Another, another yeah, nice Yang. Got by your chips. But now he's at 100K to start. And then literally yeah, the next right. hand shown, <laughs> he goes all in. Ace King against Kings. Heart, And now just an ace, and we can see that a couple of them are dead. Six of clubs for a foul deck. Six of like clubs. Like and then, and then uh, pretty much the hand of maybe the year, really, that goes, uh, you know, it took a fair amount of time to happen in real time, but this is this is the hand, Sam, from day 2D. I'm sure you heard about it. Just the flat. Is there any bishop stacks behind? Uh, is oh, why? Oh, my. What a setup hand this is. Oh, wow. Well, Bobby Eichel with the queens. Fan with the aces flat. Hutter's got kings. He might get away. He might get away. Oh, let's say Hutter, let's say Hutter squeezes. Uh, Ikali goes all in, and now Fan back jumps to safety. He might somehow get away here. Oh, my. Oh, what a spot. And, and, fan, and Fan just flat the aces has kind of made this really, really interesting. So interesting, actually. Oh, he's pulled in. See how far better that They might all get away from that. No. We might not see a far better. No, I think someone's going to... Ikali will have to put the money in. Just Really? I mean, if she... And Mux. And Mux the aces. Good. That, that would be pretty crazy. No, the last second change position. Oh, that might be your ways. Right. I, should I call? Wait, should I call? Should I call? You know what? Let's just raise it. Let's check water straight. Again, if I kings, I, I mean, are you folding kings here, Sam? I think you are, right? Easy from our perspective. We see the cards. Yeah, first. with the action here, I think. And you're, you're blocking ace king. Uh, Bobby, and, uh, and now Fan has five that after cladding. Is this a New York back raise or no? Is this a New York back raise? Is that what they call it? New York back raise? I don't, I don't, I don't really like it, though. I'm going to go with that. Yeah. You, you can um, do it, Hutter. Three opens. Give me your shelves. Is it a win? Oh, my. Let's go. Hey, Hutter, just. He is a god. Yeah, that's honestly impressive. Okay, now he shall work full. He lost 12,000 chips. Yeah. That's yeah. Kings versus aces and queens, and he lost 12,000 chips. He might get two folds. Butter is a god. That's amazing. If he gets two folds here, he'll never get to play aces again. So you see, they're in this weird it's room here. It's like, it's not really, they're, they're in the sense, this claustrophobic space that's next to other tape. It's just a very strange spot to be playing. I think he's going to get away. That's my reason. I think he gets two folds and never plays aces again. Oh my. Go on. Wow! <laughs> Let's go. Very impressive. That is crazy. There you go. So we'll stop the screen sharing there. And so again, just an example of some pretty great, you know, good highlight reel of hands. You know, I we had discussed the top hundred hands of the World of Poker uh, that was dropped a while ago, and how every year or go really the top five hands of this main event of that main event, and you already have, I think, a few candidates for some solid ones for 2024, with obviously still six more days of play to go. So. Uh, I've been very happy with that. Um, I've been I've noticed that there's been a few trends of, of players play. I've noticed a lot of min raising and uh, even during levels where I thought maybe the blind structure would have warranted maybe a bit bigger. A lot of uh, pretty tight folds, but usually correct folds. I've been very impressed. I, I mean, there's been, there have been some crazy bluffs here and there, but a lot of really good folds too, I've noticed. Yeah, I wonder why people are playing a little bit tighter this year. Uh, it seems interesting. I don't know why, what, what, that, what exactly that means. I mean, obviously you have a lot of people who are less experienced so you're not as familiar with GTO and other things. So I'm curious to see if that's going to continue in the future, if that's just sort of a one-off anomaly. Mm -hmm. And so something else I, I wanted to maybe do with you is we could go through, because now the player list is relatively manageable, we could go down the entire chip roster and just name 
you know, who we're rooting for that's left and maybe one person who we didn't know we weren't rooting for, even though we were rooting for them. Uh, you know, our last interviewee, Andreas Wadner, the live poker guide, author of the London Poker Guide, uh, I was under the erroneous assumption based upon the poker news reporting that he was playing in this main event. And I was noticing he made day two, he made day three, he made day four, he made day five. And so I, was, I, I commented on his YouTube page, oh man, congratulations, I'm really rooting for you, and so, and so on and so forth. Because on poker news, if you click the name as a little hyperlink, it will take you to that person's profile. And it had his picture. So I, I had no reason to believe that it wasn't him because it, it showed his 2019 main event cash results on that, his picture, obviously, his name. Uh, and then just, just this morning, I, I, I learned... Uh, I guess to my you know horror surprise that it was not him. It's merely someone with the same name that was never caught or corrected. So uh, maybe if this guy wins the main event and it'll, it'll be on his cinema by accident, it'd be pretty funny. So uh, it's unfortunate, but I I like to think that there's some some slight like you know inverse interview bump vibes going to Andreas Wagner in the main event. So I'll root for him still, even if it's not our Andreas Wagner. Yeah, same here. He's uh, he's he's got quite a few write ups thus far. I mean, he's been mentioned in the updates like five or six times. He was pretty big on day one. He's had a couple other write ups since. So, uh, faux Andreas Wagner, lesser Andreas Wagner, who's currently playing the main event. Best of luck to you, sir, and obviously best of luck to Mister Live Poker Guide as well. Yeah, I think he has like about like half a million. With the blinds going to be like ten k, twenty five k. So that's still mm -hmm. twenty five big blind. No, uh, twenty big blind. 20, 20 big blinds. So again, short, but uh, you can fold for an orbit and still have enough to get a good double up after that. Uh, but as far as going over the chip count, so I've, you know, Mr. Steven Song, who I'm not familiar with, is the chip winner with 4.745 million. Uh, we'll be, I'll be very curious to see how he actually falls in place as far as how he'll ultimately finish. Adrian Mateos, who is a multi percent winner who we talked about in uh, past main event final tables. Again, I, I know him. I can't say I like I actively root for him, but obviously if he does well, I think that's good for the for the pros to have one guy on their on on in the final, you know, few players. But you know, I'll I'll root for him by default if it comes to it. But for now he's just, you know, he's in the, you know, middle upper part of my a hierarchy list for who's left. Uh, scrolling down here, a lot of people I don't know. Alex Keating, the beard from 2016. He's been a very big chip stack this entire main event so far. He's uh, currently in 27th place to begin day five of 2.9 uh, million. So uh, again, I, I I didn't like how he came across in the edit. He, he might be a nice guy. I, I don't, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm not, I don't, I don't wish negativity towards him or anything. I felt that maybe he, he hit the line a little bit of sort of, you know, social faux pas a little bit during that main event stint, but um, if he's a nice guy and the poker player community are, are happy he does well, then I'll be happy for them, I guess, as well. But, you know, back of my mind. Daniel Hashem, who we saw in one of those hands earlier, 35th place currently with 2.7 million, so I'll root for him. Uh, who else we got here? A few players that I don't really know, but have been name-dropped here and there. Jesse Lonis, I don't really know him, but he's pretty high up in there. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, David Kosiak, who's a three-time bracelet winner. He's 26th right now, so he, he could stand a good shot of going deep. Brendan Cantu, maybe he won't shove the 10-5 and 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 uh, blow his main event like an 08. We'll see. I know he's a good friend of, of Hill Helmuth, so uh, we'll, we'll see. Maybe Helmuth will be his coach if he makes it very really far. Lococo, Papa MC, uh, making it deep. He's got 2 million chips right now. And, you know, the, the, the top fifth of the pack right now. So uh, he might run deep again. That'd be kind of cool. Maybe it'd be another wrap for the uh, edited 2024 main event uh, content going in the future. Um, Alex Livingston, who was was a super big chip stack for the last couple of days, still not 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 as big now, but still two million chips. He's had two deep runs. Maybe he'll make it three. You know, he got third in twenty nineteen, and I think it was like thirteenth or something or so in twenty thirteen. So uh, he'll look to hopefully uh, improve there. He's won he's won a lot of money recently as well. Brian Kim uh, from a couple of years ago, who got again that pretty awful edit uh, in that main event on day on day seven when he ran. And I think it was like like 20, 20th, 21st, or something like in the in the low twenties. Mm -hmm. I you know it's funny about, about Brian Kim. I was just watching twenty twelve main event uh, footage just kind of randomly, just for fun. And he appears uh, randomly on on day four. And that, as I was watching, it's pretty funny to see his name and then see that happen. Uh, going down a bit further here, who else do we care about here? Antoine Saut, one hundred thirty four, one point six million right now. Wow, he's just really, really consistent. Really props to him. Nacho Barbero. I don't know him too well, but I know Negron is friends of him, so. Uh, I guess I'll half root for him if I have to. Brian Rast, still in of 100 141st currently with, with 1.6 million. I'll root for him, obviously. Uh, let's see who else we got here. Scrolling down now. Tony Dunst, 1.3 million, 192nd place. Mm -hmm. 
Kristen Foxen, one hundred ninety-eighth place, one point three yeah. million. Kevin McPhee, he was the guy that that won that big hand against the best of Selps in that compilation of, of Selps going uh, getting angry. Right. Yeah, I remember that. Um, Parker Talbot is like Tonka, who I it was like some weird like Born in America, like King of the Hill thing that he was a part of. That I know that he went against Helmuth, so I guess I know him sort of a little bit. Um, again, scrolling. Oh, Dragona Makhlprag or Dragona Limp from three years ago, the last woman standing, who I uh, had a you know pretty good investment in because I had watched her play on day three when Adam was in Vegas uh, playing day three of the main event that year. So I'm rooting mm -hmm. for obviously she got you know rivered on a three outer uh, to bust uh, relatively you know like middle of day six or whatever that was or turn day six. So I'll be rooting for her. obviously she had a lot of chips earlier. She lost a few here, but I have full confidence in her ability to win those back. So that could be good. Um, what else we got? Aaron Lightborn. I remember he he was one of the guys that made it to, to 2014 day seven. Uh, just went on early, but I just remember that bracelet. Oh, Daniel Anderson, uh, yeah. the not quite RN from uh, a poker documentary that we watched a while back. Uh, again, if I, I I would love to find out about the whole RN angle, what happened with that, but uh, obviously rooting for her, she's at least locked up like 40,000 bucks. So, uh, hopefully she can run deep and maybe get that. that uh, sponsorship she's always wanted from like a decade ago. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah, uh, she's like a million uh, chips right now. So. Yeah, you see, that's yeah, so something. Uh, yeah. sc scrolling down some more. I'm at, at around 300. Still nobody else. David Baker, three. he's at 306th place. Phil Ivey, 335th place currently with 650 in chips. Uh, mm -hmm. Rooting for him. Again, he's, uh, I think, just barely uh matched his finish in 2014 and 2018 when he ran uh to day five or day four day five those days so uh again he's always dangerous with chips and if there's one player i trust of a medium to short stack to spin it up it's phil ivy because he always knows where he's at in the hand so he's not going to get it in bad or anything i don't think so i'll be watching him obviously i i, I guess i, I gotta put him by, by default number one on my list and maybe dragon limb number two before I get to the rest of my horses in the race here. Obviously, I wouldn't room for all the ladies to do well. It would be great if, if someone ran, made the foul table. Jonathan Little has been a big stack, but a little bit short right now, but he's still in there with half a million in chips. I'll root for him. Um, who else we got here? We're running out of people. Well, Andreas Wagner is 365th. Yes, that's right. That's right. Natasha Mercier, or Nini Bar Barbour, uh, still you know short stack, but still in there. Root for her, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, Ronald McDonald, 409th place. Nice to see that he's got oh, Maria Ho, 340,000 still in there. Again, she always seems to kind of make it very deep, but then be like one of the shortest stacks when that day begins. It was the case in like 2016 and a couple other in 2014. So hopefully maybe she'll uh, have some luck here. Adam Friedman, only 290,000, but he was a super mega stack for, I think, days three and four. I'm a little surprised to see him this low on the list, but he's still in there. So room for him, of course. Uh, Lonnie Hui. Oh, Lonnie Harwood, Lonnie Hui. Uh, well, a lot of married women on this list that have changed their names since we've started following on poker. Uh, she's got 230,000 chips, not a lot, but you know, one double up and you're back in it. Uh, and the, the short stack right now is this guy named uh, Jason James with 80,000 chips. I'm rooting for him too. I'm going to put him atop my list as well. Uh, imagine the short stick on day five wins the whole thing. That'd be pretty sick. That would be sick. Yeah, I've always found it interesting to see where the top stacks go because, you know, more often than not, the chip leader on day four or five, who you think has all these chips, they're going to run deep. They more often than not do not run deep. So I'm always curious to see how that happens. But Adrian Mateos is, you know, such a great player that I think he will be able to hang on to those chips for a while. Um, yeah, I mean, we always had a lot of names that you just mentioned, like Adam Friedman, of people who really did have a big stack and were doing well and are now still short, but they're, they're talented enough players. I mean, Adam's won so many mixed game bracelets. He's done so well in so many tournaments that I think he can, he can spin it up if he gets a little bit lucky, uh, obviously has, you know, has some work to do, but he can definitely get there. Yeah. I mean, Phil Ivey's, you know, obviously my number one horse, uh, you know, it'd be really, really nice to see him make a final table. Then nice I see Daniel Anderson make the final table, you know, just as long as it's exciting. That's all I really care about. I always like seeing, you know, one amateur, you know, sort of living the dream, trying to make it all the way to the end. We haven't seen one of those people win the main event since Kui wins. So I hopefully we can we can see that happen soon. Uh, that'd be kind of fun. Yeah, and you know the the I, I've been happy with the choice of like the spotlighted pro or pros at the two main featured tables. But at the same time, because they've been pretty fair about rotating, we don't really have like a main character like we had yeah. with Ruby last year, which is fine. I don't mind 
make some things up, but uh, I do I, I I did feel like it did make last year's coverage stand out by having Rigby be kind of the main character for you know days one through five or six or or, or so. Uh, Zilong Zhang, we haven't had like a talky player like a Zilong Zhang, but it's still early enough that that'd be possible. Um, and you know again I've I've been tracking every single bust out on in the money, so I've been following who is who made it, and, and there are, there are names that I didn't even know were still in that are that were cashing and doing well, so it's kind of cool to be surprised by that. It was funny. There was um uh, like a, a maybe like a hundred bust out section of the field that went out, and it was like half of the twenty nineteen final table. Mm-hmm. Archington, Zenkai, uh, I think. Oh, a Tony, uh, Tony, Kevin Maz, uh, and then we saw Livingston still in there. So obviously that's that's half the table right there. And Sun ran, you know, I think to like day three or something like that. Uh, again, I'm a little let that but, you know the, the main event champions didn't last as long this year as last year, but it was fun to kind of watch them fall one by one. Joe McKean was the last one standing amongst the uh, former champs. Although I guess if you include the European main event, uh, I guess Mateos did he win that one? Maybe I don't know if I, I think he did. So it, you can kind of call him maybe like a half main event champion winner in there. We'll see. Um, there, there's still a handful of bracelet events left. I know Negrano was in playing in, the, in a new event, the ten the ten k eight game mixed championship. Uh, with a short start though, so we'll see how he does in that. But there's, there's still a lot of pull action to go. I'm very happy so far, even if I think the coverage should be a bit better. But maybe in the back half, things will improve. Yeah, I mean, it always gets more exciting as you get up to the final table. I mean, I really love the money bubble. I really love the final table bubble and obviously the final table itself. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's it's been an exciting main event thus far. I'm really curious to see how things turn out. Obviously, a lot of action left. Again, just still too early to say, like, who's going to make the final table or not. But you do have a lot of really talented players with – you know, a minimum room to room, room to loom, burn, room to lose. So we'll have to see how that goes. Room to lose? You're having a stroke? <laughs> room, room to move. I don't Thank know. You. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Drink some water. So, yes. And again, my my sort of quote unquote horses in the race, like, I, I wasn't counting how many women are left in the field. I'm room for them, obviously. Uh, I listed a good good number of names there. So I, I would hope at least we'll say a third of them make day six. I'll settle for that. Is that fair? I mean, I don't know. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, and I, I will obviously reevaluate every day how many people I'm rooting for, how far they make it. I'll be very, very excited to see what happens here. And uh, if you guys have any money you're rooting for, or you know your family is playing the main event right now and they're still alive, let us know in the comments section. We'll we'll uh, root for them too. And uh, again, apologies to Wagner for topping up on Twitter and on YouTube for him being the main event, but maybe he'll play it some other time and it'll, it'll be kind of an ironic twist. Uh, I did see, I, I tweeted on the podcast Twitter page, someone had like trolled poker news and entered themselves as Donald, Donald J. Trump and as a chip with, with 69 million chips in the main event. So I, I took a screenshot. It's now gone, but I screen capped it. You can check my Twitter, uh, Ben, the poker RN. Uh, on Twitter to see that post there. Uh, it was pretty funny, and uh, I got a laugh out of it. But, uh, but uh, in any case, I think that about wraps up this sort of mini main event check-in. Maybe we'll we'll talk more before the final table or something like that if something happens dramatically, and uh, we'll see who will be the, the proud winner of $10 million. Yeah, we obviously are focused on the main event, these last uh, tournaments in the WSOP. But if you have any content you want us to review, uh, if, you wanted, if you were in the main event this year or you were in the WSOP event, Whatever event, we don't really care. And you want to talk about uh, your experiences, feel free to let us know and we'll try to have you on the podcast. Uh, anything y'all want, we're happy to talk about. Yeah, I, I mean, I've, I've reached out to a few players. Maybe we'll we'll get Brian Mike on or something. That'd be, that'd be pretty cool. Uh, he did respond to me, at least that's something. Uh, and, you know, we do have hopefully the Mike Metis have documentary coming up later this summer to review. So I'm very excited to watch that in all its glory. But uh, until next time, guys, enjoy your poker, enjoy your TV, and enjoy your poker on TV. Hopefully you'll have room to lose. <laughs> I guess. Take care.